good morning all last week we have studied about process and a thread a program in execution is called a process and a thread is more like a lightweight process and it share same resources of, of a process today we will going through inter process communication and various methods for achieving this inter process communication this are the outline of this session initially i'll give an introduction to inter process communication this inter process communication is a method by which we are achieving the communication between various process in a computer system and there are many methods for inter process communications such as signals message queue sockets shared memory etc today we will cover on signals semaphore and message queue under inter process communication topic here i'm going to discuss about inter process communication and as its name in place inter process communication is a method through which two process communicate with each other and here we can, you can see there are two processes process p1 and process p2 both are communicating through some mechanism and this mechanism is called inter process communication and here the we can see the definition of the inter process communication as inter process communication is a mechanism which is provided by an operating system that allow process to communicate with each other using this inter process communication the one process can inform another process that some event is occurred and also it can transfer data from one process to another suppose we are using a word processing application and when we press the close button of the word processor application the window should be closed and this is happen because of this inter process communication because the process which is handling the mouse movement will let the word processor knowing that there is some click is occurred and the word processor take the necessary action here in the case the the application window will be closed because the mouse pointer is clicked on the close button and similarly we can also use this inter process communication to transfer data between various processes there are many approaches for inter process communication the first one is signal then message queue then pipe then socket then file then a shared memory and uh, some of this inter process communication method is one directional here the pipe and a uh, signal uh, approaches of inter process communication is one di uni directional and but the socket file shared memory etc we can be used for bidirectional inter process communication method and uh, the signal inter com inter process communication method is used for uh, sending information about some events and it cannot be used for sending data in order to send data we have to either use pipe socket or file or shared memory and a message queue we can be also used for sending a sm small amount of data now we can go through the first method of inter process communication signals this signals is used for communicating the events between various processes and it is defined as signals are limited form of inter process communication ipc typically used in unix or unix like and other posix compliant operating system and uh, this means that it is used in either we can use used in unix or unix like and uh, posix compliant operating system so we can use it in linux linux or various linux flavors such as ubuntu fedora debian etc and uh, mac os and android etc the signal cannot be used in windows operating system 
because Windows is not a POSIX compliant operating system. When a signal is sent, the operating system interrupts the target normal flow of execution to deliver the signal. If the process has previously registered a signal handler, that routine is executed, otherwise the default signal handler is executed. It is saying that it is the signal is more like an interrupt. If some interrupt come, the processor will halt its normal flow of execution and start executing the interrupt handler. Similarly, if some signal is come, the process will stop and it will start executing the signal handler. Every signal has a unique name and it is start with the letters SIG which is the first three letters of the word signal. And uh, for the for example for the stop signal the signal name should be will be SIG stop. And uh, for the terminating signal the signal name will be SIG term. And uh, for the kill signal uh, it will be SIG kill like that. And uh, there are four classes of actions for four, four types of action which can be taken when a signal arrive. And uh, uh, it can be uh, the actions which is taken can be either exit or core, core dump or stop or ignore. Here in the case of exit, the when the signal arri arrive, it will force the process to exit. And the core signal, it will force the process to exit and uh, create a core for core file. And for the stop signal, it will temporarily halt the process. And uh, for the ignore signal, it is nothing but ignore the signal and no action will be taken. Then we can see the common type of POSIX signals. The first one is SIG ABRT and SIG IoT. And uh, this will tell the process to abort or terminate. And when this type of signal is received by a process, the process will terminate. And the next type of signal is SIG ALRM, SIG VT ALRM and SIG PROF. And this is used for alarm functioning. And the third one is SIG bus. And it will raise when in a bus error happened. Such as uh, incorrect memory access or non-existent physical memory access etc. The next signal is 6 CHLD. This will send to the parent process when the child process status changed. Like uh, it child process is terminated or interrupted or resumed after being interrupted. And next one is 6 COND. And it will instruct the process to continue. And it is sent to a post process and next one is SIG FPE and it will send it to the process when the process execute a arithmetic errorful arithmetic operation such as division by zero. The next signal is signal hang up or SIG HUP. The SIG HUP signal is sent to the process when its controlling terminal is closed. And if the process executed some illegal instruction, it will get SIG ILL signal. And if the, uh, the process need to be interrupted, then it will get the signal interrupt or SIG IND signal. If we want to terminate a process, we can send the SIG kill signal. And the SIG kill signal will immediately terminate the process and the sick pipe signal is sent to a process when it is attempt to write to a pipe without the process connected to the other end in other words the sick pipe signal is received by the process when it is trying to write to a broken pipe and we will see this pipe ipc method in the next class and now it is come sick pole signal and this sick pole signal will uh, received by the process when some event occurred on the watched file descriptor here the signal sickrt min and sickrt max which is used to for user defined purposes 
and these are real time signals then this circuit signal is sent to a process to instruct the process to quit and perform a cordon and the and the scgv signal is received by a process when it is trying to reference an invalid virtual memory and the six stop signal will temporarily halt the process and uh, if the process is sent a invalid argument to the system it will receive a six signal and the six term signal can be used to terminate a process and uh, upon receiving the six time signal the process can either terminate or or it can ignore the signal and this sick trap signal will be received by the process when some exceptions happen and sick use sr1 and sick usr2 is used to, for user defined conditions in the last few slides we covered the term signals and this signal is an ipc mechanism now we are going through semaphore a semaphore is a variable or abstract data type used to, to control access to a common resource by multiple process in a concurrent system and it is saying that it semaphore is nothing but a variable and depending on the value of this variable the shared resources in the computer is accessed you can understand the concept of semaphore using this image here you can see there is one security or a bouncer who is guarding a night club net there is one night club here and he is guarding the night club and three persons who is um, want to enter the night club and uh, right now they are waiting in a queue and the security will allow the person to enter in a night club if it is not filled if the night club is filled then the security will wait for one person to leave if one person is left then the security will allow one person to enter into the night club and if the night club is empty or partially empty it will allow the person to enter into the night club so here the security is act like a semaphore and depending on the number of persons in the night club it will allow the person to enter into the night club or in other words it will allow the semaphore will allow the process to access the resources here the resources is is nothing, nothing but the night club and the processor are, are the persons the semaphore is the security now we can consider various examples of semaphore in the first example we can consider two variables variable a and a variable s variable a is a regular variable and it can take any values but the variable s is a boolean variable it means that it can be taken either true or false and the depending on the value of variable s if the variable s is true then a can be accessed if the variable s is false then a can cannot be accessed in this case s is act as a semaphore in the second example we are considering the case of a train and a train station and here there is one traffic signal or stop signal s and a train station a suppose the train want to access the train station a in order to access the train station a the stop signal s should be green and if the stop signal is is uh, red or yellow then train cannot access the train station semaphores are classified into two types counting semaphores and binary semaphores if a semaphore which allow an arbitrary result count then it is called a counting semaphore here we can consider the example of the night club which we previously discussed here in the case of night club 
the maximum number of patients which is allowed to enter into the night club is 50 and uh, depending on the number of persons in the night club the security will allow the person to enter into the night club if the uh, number of persons in the night club is 50 then the security or the bouncer which is guarding the uh, club is not allowed the allowed any more person to enter into the night club so if one person lived uh, lived, uh, lived from the night club at that day then it will allow a one more person to enter into the night club and at any time the security won't allow the number of person into the night club more than 50 and the second type of semaphore is called binary semaphore and the example of the binary semaphore is the train station and the signaling light example which is which we previously discussed here the if the here the signal light can take an either two values either green or red so it can be called as a binary value because it is taken only two values green or red and depending on the value of this signal light the train can be entered into the station if the signal light is red the train cannot be entered into the station and if the signal light is green the train can be entered into the station the success of the protocol requires application to follow it correctly fairness and safety are likely to be compromised even if a single process acts incorrectly it means that for the success of this semaphore all the process or thread which is utilizing the shared resources should follow this semaphore correctly if any of the process or thread not following it this following this protocol properly then the whole system will collapse and uh, this includes requesting a resources and forgetting to release it or a process request uh, releasing a resources that were never requested or a process holding a resources for long time without needing it or a process or thread using a resources without requesting it first in order to understand the algorithm of the semaphore we can consider the semaphore s and this semaphore s contains the number of units of the resources that are currently available and for accessing this semaphore s or changing the value of the semaphore s we can use two functions function b and function p this we can change the value of the semaphore only through these two functions we cannot change the value other than these two functions and here the function v increment the sum of value of the semaphore s it may it means that it makes the resources available after the process finished using it and there is one another function which is operation p or function p and it decrement the value of the semaphore s it means that some process is want to use the resources so when a when the semaphore is when a process is assigned to the resources the operation p will be executed such times the value of the semaphore will be decremented we can see the algorithm of the semaphore here there are two functions function v and function p in function v the value of the semaphore is incremented by one and in function p the value of the semaphore is decremented by one and this value of the semaphore is decremented only if the value of the semaphore is greater than or equal to one and this condition makes sure that the value of the semaphore never go to a negative value and it is not possible now we are moving on to message queue and the message queue is a, an interprocess communication method and this message queue paradigm is a sibling of the publisher subscriber pattern and this publisher subscriber pattern can be easily understood by a real world example if we 
കൺസിഡർ വേരിയസ് മാഗസിൻസ് സച്ച് എസ് ആരോഗ്യ മാസിക യാത്രാ മാഗസിൻസ് തൊഴിൽ വാർത്ത തൊഴിൽ വേദി എക്സെട്രാ ആൻഡ് സപ്പോസ് വൺ പേഴ്സൺ വാണ്ട് ടു വൺ ടു റീഡ് തൊഴിൽ വാർത്ത ആൻഡ് ആരോ ആരോഗ്യ മാസിക ഈച്ച് മന്ത് സോ ഹി വിൽ പുട്ട് ബൈ എ സബ്സ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് ടു മാഗസിൻസ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ വെൻ ദ പബ്ലിഷർ പബ്ലിഷ് ദ മാഗസിൻസ് എവറി മന്ത് ഹി വിൽ ഗെറ്റ് എ കോപ്പി ഓഫ് ദ മാഗസിൻ ത്രൂ എ പോസ്റ്റ് മാനോർ ഓർ ത്രൂ എ ന്യൂസ് പേപ്പർ ഡെലിവറി ബോയ് ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് എക്സാമ്പിൾ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യു ഓൾസോ ഹാസ് മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ പബ്ലിഷേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ദ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബേഴ്സ് ക്യാൻ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് എനി മെസ്സേജസ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ എ ദ മെസ്സേജ് ഇസ് പബ്ലിഷ്ഡ് ബൈ ദ പബ്ലിഷർ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ഡെലിവേഡ് ടു ദ റിസീവർ ഓർ ദ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബർ ത്രൂ ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ഇസ് എൻ ആസിങ്ക്രോണസ് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻ മെസ് മെസ് മെത്തേഡ് ഇറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദൻ ദ സെൻറ്റർ ആൻഡ് ദ റിസീവർ ഓഫ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ഡു നോട്ട് നീഡ് ടു ഇൻട്രാക്ട് വിത്ത് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം ആൻഡ് ദിസ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ഓൾസോ ഓഫേഴ്സ് സം ഡാറ്റ ലിമിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഹിയർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് സെയിങ് ദാറ്റ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ഹാവ് ഇംപ്ലിസിറ്റ് ഓർ എക്സ്പ്ലിസിറ്റ് ലിമിറ്റ് ഓൺ ദ സൈസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡാറ്റ ദാറ്റ് മേ ബി ട്രാൻസ്മിറ്റഡ് ഇൻ എ സിംഗിൾ മെസ്സേജ് നോ വി ക്യാൻ ഗോ ത്രൂ ദ എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ഓഫ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂസ് ഹിയർ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ത്രീ എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ആർ ക്ലൗഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂസ് ലൈക്ക് ആമസോൺ സിമ്പിൾ ക്യൂ സർവീസ് സ്റ്റോം ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ഐ എൻ എം ക്യൂ ആർ ദ ക്ലൗഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ആൻഡ് ദ ലേറ്റർ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ആർ ഓപ്പൺ സോഴ്സഡ് ഫ്രീ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ലൈക്ക് റാബിറ്റ് എം ക്യൂ ആക്റ്റീവ് എം ക്യൂ അപ്പാഷ റോക്കറ്റ് എം ക്യൂ സൺ ഓപ്പൺ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ജേ ബോസ് മെസ്സേജിങ് എക്സെട്ര ആൻഡ് മെനി ഓഫ് ദിസ് മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആർ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ആർ മെയ്ഡ് യൂസിങ് ജാവ നോ വി ക്യാൻ ഗോ ത്രൂ ദ ഇംപ്ലിമെൻറ്റേഷൻ പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഓഫ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ഹിയർ ഇനീഷ്യലി ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ഇംപ്ലിമെൻറ്റേഷൻ പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഈസ് ടു ഇൻസ്റ്റാൾ ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂവിങ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഹിയർ ഇൻ ടെപ്പിക്കൽ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂവിങ് ഇംപ്ലിമെൻറ്റേഷൻ എ സിസ്റ്റം അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേറ്റർ ഇൻസ്റ്റാൾ ആൻഡ് കോൺഫിഗർ ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂവിങ് ആൻഡ് ഡിഫൈൻ നെയിംസ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദിൻ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ദ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബർ വിൽ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ടു ദ മെസ്സേജ് മെസ്സേജസ് ആൻഡ് ഹിയർ ആൻ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ദെൻ രജിസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് എ സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ റൂട്ടീൻ ദാറ്റ് ലിസൺ ഫോർ എ മെസ്സേജസ് പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ടു ദ ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് തേർഡ്ലി ദ പബ്ലിഷർ വിൽ ഹാവ് ടു പബ്ലിഷ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ഇൻ ടു ദ ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ദ സബ്സിക്വൻറ്റ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ മേ ബി കണക്റ്റഡ് ടു ദ ക്യൂ ആൻഡ് ട്രാൻസ്ഫേഴ്സ് എ മെസ്സേജ് ഓൺ ടു ഇറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഫൈനലി ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഹാവ് ടു ഡെലിവർ ദ മെസ്സേജ് ടു ദ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബിംഗ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ഹിയർ ദ ക്യൂ മാനേജർ സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ സ്റ്റോർ ദ മെസ്സേജസ് ആൻഡിൽ എ റിസീവിംഗ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ കണക്റ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് കോൾ ദിസ് രജിസ്റ്റേഡ് സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ റൂട്ടീൻ ദ റിസീവിംഗ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ദെൻ പ്രൊസസ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ഇൻ ആൻ അപ്രോപ്രിയേറ്റ് മാനർ വി ഹാവ് ടു കൺസിഡർ ഫോളോ ഫോളോയിങ് ക്രൈറ്റീരിയസ് ബിഫോർ ചൂസിംഗ് ദ മെസ്സേജ് ക്യൂവിംഗ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ the first one is durability if we kept the message in the memory then it will be lost if the power goes down so it is better to uh, store the message in a disk or in a database management system for obtaining high durability and the second consideration is the security policy and it will determine which application should have the access to these messages and then it's come the message purging policy it means that uh, after some times the message is not delivered it should be deleted and this per- message purging policy determine the time to leave of the message or ttl field of the message and then it comes message filtering and this message filtering policies allows Uh, the subscribers to filter the messages based on some pre-specified criteria or interest the next consideration is that a delivery policy 
and this delivery policy guarantees that message is delivered at least once and then it's come routing policy and this routing policy tell what action to be taken when more than one queuing servers are present and then comes batching policy and receipt notification and this batching policy will characterize the message uh, received should be delivered immediately or delivered deliver in batches and this receipt notification it will tell whether the publisher need to be notified when the subscriber is received a message thank you